It's a real honor. Uh, I've always uh, been a big uh, fan of books and and reading and uh, to be here, it's just an energy. I mean, we're in this enormous space, but you can feel the energy. It's just pal palpable. We're, um, you know, it's funny for for so 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 long. I would do two two posts a day. Uh, I didn't even know what content meant. You know, now I scramble for content. But I was thinking yesterday, there's going to be a lot of content here, so I'm going to have to do some posting for sure. Well, how y'all doing was was a wonderful sort of process, and anyone who has schlepped a, a manuscript around to publishers and been uh, turned down and gotten rejection letters, they're gonna wanna slap me. They came to me. The, uh, the publishers came to me, and they said, uh, we think you have a book. We want you to call it How Y'all Doing. We want you to um, uh, write about this, and we want you to use this uh, uh, Instagram post and this, and they laid it out. I mean, chapter by chapter by chapter. So I had this amazing sort of um, outline in which I could take, it was a wonderful writing exercise, but to take a two-minute post and without knowing uh, what a brilliant marketer I was, <laughs> each of my posts had a beginning, a middle, and an end in, in that you know format. And so to take that and elongate it into a chapters was just a wonderful, wonderful writing experience. Well, my mother, who, uh, not to put a damper on the proceedings, passed May 17th of this year, gave me the greatest gift, and that was my love of reading. Um, she would take me to the bookmobile, and it would pull into the elementary school, and I would lay on my bed. First of all, it was air conditioned, <laughs> which we didn't have air conditioning back then in Tennessee, and I would lay on my belly with all the books until they literally ran me off. They would say, uh, Leslie, you've got to go. So I've always had this amazing um, uh, uh, love of, of reading and, and books. And then when I was probably 14 or 15 years old, in school, we had to read a play, or we had to read a short story by Truman Capote, and I think we, I read something by Tennessee Williams, and all of a sudden, all these veiled inferences um, were popping up, and I knew, I knew, I mean, being a little gay boy growing up in the Baptist church, and it was, it saved my life. I mean, you know, I knew what Skipper and um, Brick were up to. I knew, you know, I knew what was going on with, with the Truman Capote characters and the little boy and this and that. And it probably saved my life. I don't think that I have seen Megan since the show went off the air, um, which would be quite a while ago. You know, we've kept up with each other. Um, uh, but not like hang out and, you know, I've followed Nick and Nick's career with his books that he's written and all he has going on with Amy Poehler. They have all kinds of podcasts or whatever fun stuff going on. I've kept that, but this will be a true, true reunion. And I plan on walking in and going, well, 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 Karen Walker, I thought I smelled gin and regret. And what I'm hoping she'll reply is, which was my favorite line ever. Well, Beverly Leslie, you look more like a woman every time I see you. <laughs> so maybe that'll happen, maybe it won't. Um, one thing you have to know is that Megan Mullally is not Karen Walker, you know, in real life. She created that character, the voice, everything. And it's pretty amazing. So a lot of times when people are expecting this Karen Walker, and here comes Megan, who's a bit of a bookworm, and, a, a, you know, qu quiet, much quieter than Karen Walker. They're a little surprised. But uh, I love them both.